Over 40 small children were kidnapped and used as slaves for malicious intent. Several children were tossed down flights of stairs to their deaths, and others were forced into suitcases then distributed throughout the city in which they died in, just to name a few. Let's find out together if these child murders were part of a larger conspiracy, or were they just victims of circumstance by a lone killer? This channel is about lesser known serial killers. If you're interested, I upload new content every Tuesday and Thursday. Well, if you're ready, let's get started. 1990 in the country of India and in the city of Pune, previously called Pune, is one of the most important industrial and educational hubs in India. This is also where millions of tourists flock to see the Aga Khan Palace, which is the shrine built in 1892 as a memorial to Gandhi. The population in this mega city is estimated to be a whopping 6.2 million residents. This makes Pune a haven for robbery, petty crimes, along with thefts. The streets were filled with trash and entire families participated in these thefts, while at the same time would simultaneously be begging for money or for food. Murders did not happen frequently in this city, but recently, children had become the targets. A one-year-old child who happened to be the son of a homeless man was from a neighboring city. The child was taken and given a new name, then taken to the city of Pune by an unidentified woman. This woman told everyone that she encountered on the street that this was her child. Naturally, the people that enjoy children would stop and congratulate the assumed mother. She, in turn, enthusiastically smiled back and would thank them for their kindness. The woman pretending to be the mother of this child begged for money in order to feed the child. Most of the people that she asked were a little taken back but would give what they could anyway before moving on. The woman holding the child showed no shame in being poor and being unable to feed this child. This was because as she interacted with some passer buyers, the woman would pickpocket anyone that brushed past her. One woman had noticed that the woman holding the child had just reached in her purse and took something out. This stranger confronted the child holding woman and demanded that she return her stolen item while she simultaneously yelled for the authorities to come. Now, if you have weak stomachs, you might want to skip the next 20 seconds of this story. The child holding woman acted extremely surprised and appalled for being accused of stealing from her as she held the child in her arms. This strange woman was not buying this woman's facade and continued to confront the child holding woman for her stolen item, who was later identified as Renuka, then took this one year old baby and threw it headfirst onto the ground. The woman then immediately picked up the child and held it while its head and face were covered in its own blood. Everyone that witnessed this occurrence, including the woman yelling for the police, immediately froze and just watched in disbelief as this alleged mother scurried off with the screaming baby covered in blood while cradled in her arms. The woman carrying the baby had ran, but carrying this loud crying baby covered in blood drew the attention of everyone that she passed. Eventually, this woman ran to a relatively secluded location on the street where her family members resided. The baby continued to cry and scream at this ear-shattering level due to its injury. Fearing being apprehended by the police, the woman grabbed each one of the child's feet and swung the child's entire body until its head struck against an active electric fence pole killing it. This killer did not notice that she was being observed killing the child in front of other witnesses. After dropping the baby's body to the ground, she and her family all took off running through the crowd. No witnesses attempted to stop her from fleeing because they were all in complete disbelief and shock, so they managed to escape. The police arrived and searched for clues but found none. The witnesses were only able to give partial descriptions of the woman due to their emotional trauma. The killer and her family members eventually had a talk about what took place. This strange woman explained how much money she was able to make by using the child as a prop. The woman's pockets were filled with donations and stolen items that she was able to pickpocket from the other pedestrians. The woman's family consisted of her husband, mother, sister, and child. It was at this point that the family actually sat down and collectively formulated a plan to abduct children and use them as pawns in a money scamming scheme. For the next six years, Dozens of homeless babies and small children were taken from surrounding towns. The majority of the children taken were under five years old. They were all given new names. 
The police were unable to locate any of these missing children due to the actual parents being poor. The children were born on the street, so there were no medical records to prove that the children even existed. The children that could talk were systematically taught by the kidnappers how to distract the pedestrians while the fake parents of the child would pickpocket these unsuspecting victims of their valuables. If the children did not execute the instructions given to them by the pretending parents, they would automatically be labeled as a liability and killed in savagely gruesome ways. Some of the ways that they killed these children was to toss them down a flight of stairs to their deaths. Some small children were placed in suitcases and left in random places throughout the city on the street. Eventually they would die in those suitcases. In one case, a child had been beaten unconscious, then hung upside down until it was dead. The police eventually found a break in the case when the husband, Mohan, of the woman kidnapped a nine-year-old girl. When the child would not comply, they strangled her to death and dumped the body in a nearby sugarcane field. The authorities were able to connect him with her murder and to avoid the death penalty he told on his family members for the murders that they all collectively committed. They were his wife, Renuka, his sister-in-law, Seema, and his mother-in-law, Ajanabi. Each of them evaded capture for some time, but were all eventually arrested. They were all charged with 10 murders and 13 kidnappings. The authorities believed that there were more child killings due to the amount of children's clothes found on their property. The authorities did not have enough evidence to follow through with the charge of 10 homicides due to the lack of birth records proving that the children had ever existed. They were all charged with five killings, found guilty, and sentenced to death. The death sentence was commuted to a life imprisonment. If you enjoy more stories such as these, click on one of the suggested videos above. God bless and stay safe.